guys, it's your girl Cheyenne from Plant My Happy Space here with another video. Welcome back. Today, I want to show you guys all the plants I bought in the month of February. You're going to need to strap in because I apparently have no self-control and it got bad this month. <laughs> so I'm going to try to do this as quick as possible, but this might be a longer video. I'm gonna break it up into groups. I'm starting with the ones that I have the least amount of plants in, ending with the largest group. So I'm gonna start off with the three plants that you guys might have seen in my last video, the 2020 under 20 challenge. I got all three of these plants for under $20. And I'm gonna mention them first since you guys have probably already seen them, and I only have one of each in today's entire haul. I got the Croton, a variegated bamboo, and this Tradescantia oyster plant. Moving on, I got this cast iron plant. It is the Milky Way cast iron plant. And I'm a little mad at myself for buying this. Uh, I ordered it online and the seller explicitly said that some of the leaves would be cut in order to fit in the packaging. And I thought they would have all looked like this where it's just the tip of it kind of cut, but no, the rest were all chopped in half. So this kind of hurts my heart a little bit, and I don't know how fast of a grower it is because this is my first cast iron plant. If you guys know how quickly these are supposed to grow or what conditions I can put them in to make them grow, please let me know because like I said, this is my first cast iron plant. Next, moving on to Sanguinea, I do have this uh, traditional form of Sanguinea. I already own the tricolor and I kind of wanted to get the traditional form just to be kind of a staple plant and so far so good. It's been doing good. No brown tips or anything that I can really notice. Well, no new brown tips. There were some from uh, packaging. Other than the three that you saw that I got from Lowe's in my 2020 under 20 plants, every other plant in here is going to be one that I ordered online. So you're going to see some of these aren't in the best condition because I've only had them anywhere between one day to 30 days. So they're all still in the process of transitioning into my house, so they might not all be in the best shape. But this one doesn't seem like it's having any new tips. I've had it for about two weeks now and it's looking good. I'm happy to have it. So next I got my first Anthurium. This is an Anthurium Crystal Hope. Um, I don't know if you can see, but it's got these beautiful, shiny leaves. Um, so far, the oldest leaf is the only one yellowing, which is kind of typical when you order plants online. This second leaf seems fine, and it is pushing some new growth. So we should be doing good on this. This is my first Anthurium, so we're gonna see if it kicks the bucket later on. Um, but if you've got any tips for Ethereums, I would also greatly appreciate it. Next, I got the Raven ZZ. Now, I didn't buy two. This was actually one, I think, five inch pot. And the root system wasn't really developed. So I thought it was the perfect time to split it up and to put it into two pots so that I can enjoy it in multiple parts of my house. So we've gotten past the plants where I only had one of each. Now we're gonna actually be working in groups. The next group is gonna be Spathophyllum or Peace Lilies. I have two. This is the first one I got, which you guys might have seen in my plantarena.com unboxing. This is a Spathophyllum Platinum Mist or Peace Lily Platinum Mist. And I am still very, very happy to get it. Uh, like I said in that video, I've been starting to get a little obsessed with Peace Lilies. So the ones I'm gonna show you right now are definitely not all the ones I have, they're just the ones that I've acquired in this month. And then the second Spathophyllum I got was the Spathophyllum Jessica. And I really, really like these. If you look at the leaves, the leaves almost look like what a mature philodendron birkin would look like. These very dramatic white and green striping. Uh, I love it. Moving on to Alocasia. This one I got was sold to me as the Alocasia Ebony uh, Elephant Ear. And as you can see, this is a perfect example that these two leaves, you can just tell by the stem, 
them thinning out that I'm probably going to lose these two leaves due to shipping. And that's just something you have to be aware of when you order plants online. This is going to happen. Um, but I'm still very happy to have it. To me, it kind of looks like a more satin kind of version of the Alocasia Amazonica or Polly. And I'm really excited to have this one in my collection. I did buy a second Alocasia, which is still in my possession and thriving. However, I am currently doing a time lapse on it, so I can't really move it, but I am gonna show you some footage of it and I'll tell you all about it. I got the Alocasia Odora Variegata, the large form. I already owned the dwarf form and it's done very well in my care. So I splurged and got the original form and I absolutely love it. Next, we're moving on to Hoya. Now, before this month, I have only ever owned one Hoya, which I no longer own because it died on me. But I owned it when I was just getting into plants and actually liking them, but I did zero research on Hoyas. And I received a very small two-inch kind of stem of a Hoya Carnosa Compacta with almost no roots. And I threw it in a six inch pot and watered it constantly. And for those of you who might be a Hoya head, know that everything I just said was wrong of me to do. And I didn't get any more Hoyas after that because I thought it was almost like the Hoya's fault that they just, they weren't gonna do good in my care instead of actually just learning how to care for them. So now that I've done a little bit more research and I finally got over my fear of it, I got some Hoyas. And this was the first one I got this month, which was the Hoya Wayedii. And if you follow me on Instagram, I actually already posted a picture with this plant in it. And I'm super excited to have this in my collection. The next Hoya I got was this Hoya Crimson Queen or Hoya Tricolor. And I am super excited to have this one. I wanted kind of more trailing plant that I could put in very high light. And I really thought this one would be perfect for that. And the last Hoya I got was this Hoya Pubicalyx. And I'm also very excited about this one. I actually, I ordered this one before actually looking and I kind of wanted to get the splash version. This is the one with uh, less splashing on the leaves. I'm still very happy to have it. I still think it's beautiful. That was just the one that I was looking for. And now that I have this one, I probably won't get the splash one just because I try to limit how many repeat plants I have. And since they're so similar, I'll probably just stick with this one since this one is definitely doing it for me. So moving on now, we are moving on to snake plants or Sansevieria. The first one I got is these, these were actually one plant and then I separated this one little baby off. Again, just like the snake plant so I can see them in more places in my home. These were sold to me as both Sansevieria xylanica and also Sansevieria trepassiata. I don't know which one they are. If you guys know which one they are, please tell me. I'm not really too concerned on knowing which one they are if they look so similar. I'm gonna take care of them the same way. The next Sansevieria I got is this Sansevieria cylindrica. Now I have a gripe with not necessarily this plant, but the process of ordering this plant. Because I ordered it off Etsy, but it was a very well reviewed, very well known shop. And I have a bone to pick because I ordered this in a four inch pot. And when it got here, because of the shipping, the plant was not in the pot in any way. And because of that, I got to very easily see the root system and there was no root system. Each individual stalks, there are five total. One of them had maybe half an inch to an inch of roots. Two had a little, little stub of a root. One of them had no roots at all. So I essentially ordered a four inch pot and got cuttings. And I'm very upset about it. So I placed it into this 
I believe it's a two inch terracotta pot. And the only reason they are standing up right now because they have no root system is because I have placed rocks across the whole top just to hold them up. Yeah, I'm a little perturbed about it. I'm also very upset that when I messaged them, they basically blamed me for ripping the roots off. And I was like, no, my dude, there are no roots. Let me show you. You know, sent them pictures of what the, all the soil in the box looked like. There was no roots that were just hanging about that had been ripped off. There just weren't that many roots. And the last Sansevieria in today's haul is the Sansevieria Starfish. This was actually bought in the same purchase with the Cylindrica, but it did have a little bit more of a substantial root system, so I wasn't too mad about it. Um, and it is putting out a new little shoot right there, if you can see that. Um, so I'm, I'm fairly happy with this one. Next, we're moving on to Syngonium. I have these two Syngonium Patophyllum Algo Variegatums. I hope I said that right. Um, I ordered these from the same shop, but not at the same time. One of them came earlier in the month. Um, this one, this is the one that came earlier in the month. They had already put out two beautiful leaves for me. And I decided that when I repotted it, I wanted it to be a little bit fuller with more stems because I wanted to put it up on a moss pole. So I ordered a second one so that when they are ready to be repotted, I can repot them together. And they're beautiful. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you saw that this one has an all white leaf, which just blows my mind that it has not browned out on me yet. Um, which just tells me that the seller, you know, really knew what they were doing when it came to prepping these plants for shipping. The next Syngonium is this Syngonium Mini Pixie. Um, I bought this one because I wanted to find a compact plant that would work in high to medium light in my kitchen because I wanted to put it next to my utensil, my cooking utensils. So I wanted a plant that's not going to get too high and I eventually have to move it so that it's not in the way. I thought this was perfect. I am probably going to repot this one very soon because it is in such a small pot that I water it probably every like four days. And I can't have plants that I water every four days. I can't. <laughs> um, but it's, it's doing good so far in my house. And the last Syngonium for today's haul is gonna be this Syngonium Moonlight. And I bought this one the same reason people buy most of these Moonlight kind of plants is the fact that it is so light in color. It looks like a ghost to me and it just excites me so much to have. Syngoniums are another one that I've been kind of getting more and more into. Um, the four that you just saw were definitely not the only ones I have. Um, so I'm excited, they just do so well in my house. We are now moving on to Monstera and in front of me I have two Monstera Thai constellations. No, I did not order both of these. There's a story behind it. I ordered this one, and the seller on Etsy was letting me know that she was having some personal home issues and had to hire someone to help her. And the person who she hired did not do their job in two ways. One, they weren't really knowledgeable enough to know that you don't ship plants out the day before a long weekend because they will die in the mail. And also, um, I guess she wasn't tracking which one she'd already sent out. So I got a message from the owner saying, hey, sorry for the delay. I wanted to wait till after the long weekend, but we're gonna ship your plant out today. You should hopefully have it in about two days. And I messaged her back and said, I'm sorry, I'm a little confused. The tracking says that that plant is already out for delivery right now. I'm supposed to have it before 8 p.m. tonight. And before she had messaged me back, I had gotten home from work, unboxed the plant, and it had massive root rot. Almost the entire root system was gone. Um, actually, that's a little dramatic. About two thirds of the root system was gone. I sent her pictures of the 100% black roots that had fallen off and said, hey, this is what happened. I'm assuming it's because it got caught in the mail. And she messaged me back and said, yeah, I." I believe that that's probably what happened. I apologize. 
I will send you out a new one. And she sent me this one overnight, literally got it the next day. And this one I just have in water because I wanted to just make sure I could actually watch the root system make some progress before I potted it up. This one, it had already lost three leaves, but this one is going strong and it does look like there's a new one. So it might survive, but that way, just in case I do have this one, I potted it up, but I didn't pot it up immediately. I did treat it for the root rot extensively before potting it in here. So it has a pretty good chance of surviving. It's just gonna be a long road ahead for it to thrive. The last Monstera I bought in the month of February was this Monstera Silt Bacana. If you follow me on Instagram, you've also already seen this plant um, because it had very, very dusty leaves when I received it, so I had to clean it off. But I'm excited to have this as well. It is already putting out two new leaves that don't look like they have any tip or browning issues. Moving on to Peperomias, I've got two Peperomia Ginny. Now, if you've watched my unboxing for Plantrina.com, again, you would have already seen this one. This one came in this terracotta pot. This one is just proof that I had no self-control because I actually forgot that I had already ordered this one and it had not arrived yet. And I ordered this one. So now I've got two. I went from zero to two in the span of two days because they both delivered and I forgot that one had ordered, the, that I had ordered one or the other. And so yeah, now I've got two. <laughs> This one, is, I can tell you from plantering.com if you guys want a kind of more extensive review. This one has adapted to my home very quickly. Um, I gave it a couple of days to water it because I didn't know when was the last time it had been watered before it arrived at my house. I watered it when it looked really dry and it has been thriving ever since. It's already strained back out and leaning towards the light and this one seems to be less happy. <laughs> Continuing with the Peperomia, I've got this Peperomia Marble. Um, it didn't say what kind of Peperomia it was, but I believe it is the, uh, I'm brain farting, the one that starts with an O. Um, it'll, it'll say it down below, but yeah. I already have the less variegated version of this one, the one that's just got the yellow edging. And I've had that one for a while and it did really well, so I kind of wanted to get the more variegated version of it. And last for the peperomia, I've got this watermelon peperomia. This again is a plant, this exact plant, I have killed when I first started loving plants. And I still to this day do not know what I did wrong because when I look at peperomia care and people talking about watermelon peperomia, uh, what they say basically lined up with what I did. And I don't know what I did. So I'm hoping that maybe I just got a plant that showed up in a bad condition because again that one was one that I had ordered online. This one seems like it's in much better condition so I'm hoping you know we can hit the ground running and take care of this one far better than the other one that I used to have. So we're moving on to the last but largest group of plants that I have which are the philodendron and this is where you're really gonna see if you haven't noticed already where I went overboard. So if you haven't already, just take a break, get a snack, maybe take a drink of water, hydrate, cause it's gonna be a list. It's gonna be a list. I should take my own advice. All right, let me go get them. I'm gonna try to rapid fire these as much as I can. Uh, this first one is a philodendron pastizanum. Uh, very happy, this, this is the only leaf it had when it showed up um, and a little bit of a stump. And it doesn't seem like I'm gonna be losing this leaf, which is actually pretty rare when it comes to online plant shopping to not lose a leaf. So it doesn't look like I'm gonna lose this one. And this little stump of a new leaf is getting a little bit taller. So it looks like we are on track for this plant to be thriving in my home. I'm very excited to have it. This next one is the Philodendron El Chaco Red. Um, if you have any idea on how to make this plant happy, please tell me, because this was not a cheap plant, and I wanted it very much. And no matter what I do, it just droops. It does, it's, I can't get it to stand up. And it didn't come like this. It was a little bit more up, and it has just slowly fallen. I don't want to lose this leaf, because it is the only leaf it has right now. 
Um, if you know anything I can do, not just stake it up so that it's held up, like truly care for it so that it's happy again, please let me know. Rachel from Heart Shaped Leaves, I don't think you watch my videos, but if you do, I know you have one of these, I know it's thriving, please tell a girl what she needs to do. <laughs> this next one is one that I also really, really wanted. It is a philodendron melanocrysum crossed with a varicosum. It's been a very popular plant going around. It was just in a cover pot. Um, and I'm very excited for this one. It doesn't look like I'm gonna lose the leaf that I had when I got it, and it is pushing out some new growth. As soon as I have a second or maybe third leaf, I am gonna repot it into this so that I can put a moss pole on it because these plants are supposed to get very large and in charge if they're able to climb up a moss pole. And that is exactly what I wanna see. This next one is a Philodendron Florida Ghost. If you watched my rare houseplant unboxing, you will have already seen this one. It is thriving where I have it. It is pushing out a new leaf. I do have to water it fairly often because I put it in such a small pot, but that's okay. This is one that I didn't want to risk over potting it because it is a very expensive, well-wanted plant. The next philodendron I got is something that's been going around a lot lately, which is the philodendron birkin. Um, only this last leaf is showing some variegation because it looks like a very immature plant. I'm a little concerned for this plant because when it arrived, the plant was completely not in the pot. It looks like it had definitely had a hard time through shipping and it hasn't pushed a new leaf for me yet. So I can't tell how bad it's gonna be when it finally acclimates, but I'm excited to have it. Philodendrons are pretty hardy. So if it does need extra time to acclimate, I'm sure it'll still survive it. And I have, I have faith in it. Next, I have the Philodendron Painted Lady. Um, this was the most recent leaf that came out. It just finished turning to green. It was actually a neon yellow for a while and it was very pretty. Um, I didn't realize when they first come out, they're actually pink and then go to yellow and then go to green. So that was really exciting to see. Um, as soon as this plant dries out, I am gonna repot it. It's in, a, it's in a white cash flow right now. I am gonna repot it because I wanna be able to also put this one on the moss pole. One, because I know it'll grow larger, and two, because it's kind of floppy right now and I really wanna give it some stability so it'll go straight up. And I'm very excited to have this one as well. Next, I've got this Philodendron Pedatum. Uh, this one came in very good shape. I haven't lost a single leaf yet. And just looking at it, it is just begging to be trellised of some sort. So I'm gonna be putting this one on a moss pole as well as soon as the pot is a little bit more filled out and it's ready to be repotted. The second to last philodendron is this philodendron moonlight. Uh, this is the newest leaf that it's put out and it's still a pretty pale green from what you can see. And it looks like it's gonna be pushing out a new one here soon. I haven't lost a leaf yet on it, so I think it might be acclimating pretty well to my house. And I'm very, very excited to see how pale the new, newest leaves will come in because this one was already kind of out, just not fully unfurled by the time it showed up. So I wanna see how pale they are when they first come out. The last philodendron I got was this beast, which is the philodendron bilitai. Um, this one was also a pretty penny. And it had four leaves when it showed up, one of which I chose to cut off. It was the oldest leaf, but it was going completely this way. And this one didn't have a very large root system. So when I was trying to pot it up, that one leaf was making it very much tilt over and not staying in the soil. So I did cut it off. And then it looks like I may be losing this one as well due to it acclimating to my home. But other than that, it looks like it's doing good. Um, it is pushing new growth right here in the back. So all in all, I'm very happy about this. It looks like it might be doing well in my home. All right, guys, that's it for me. I know it was a long one. If you stuck around, I appreciate it. If you're as much of an addict as me, I'm sure this whole long video just excited you to no end. If you love this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe. 
please follow me on Instagram at plantmyhappyspace. I'd really appreciate it. Until then, I'll see you in my next video. Peace out.